This is the Tudor Pelagos FXD 2022 edition. Let's do an unboxing of it. Off of the sleeve, here's the box. This is the standard Tudor box that they've been giving out over the past few years. Um, I've owned a few Tudors in recent years, so pretty used to this box. I bought a brand new at GWC Vancouver. Um, here is the total price I paid for it, $5,107, just to uh, log it in case it does go up in the near future, or not near future, but in the upcoming years. And here is the main box itself. So you get the standard foam plastic thing here. Uh, let's put it aside. This box. So um, if you've bought a Tudor recently, you will know that this is the box that they've been using for a while. Uh, don't know the exact years where they introduced it, but it is quite nice. Um, I think it's actually a bit different, of course, than the Rolex one, but I personally prefer this over the Rolex. The only thing I don't like about it is that you can clearly see that they taped the paper across, though very well done, but um, you can still see that it's kind of a faux wood um, material down here, and then some sort of a paper, plastic material on the top. Um, it has a nice padded effect to it, so quite nice, no complaints really for a watch in this price range, um, especially given the quality the watch was built towards. Now let's unveil the Tudor FXT. So right away you can see that the watch doesn't really pop too much, and this is kind of what um, I thought myself too when I first purchased this watch. However, if you take it out, and oh, I guess a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Black Bay 58, uh, my favorite daily watch to wear. It is very comfortable on the seatbelt gray needle strap, which I usually have it on uh, in the winter times. Anyways, here is the FXD. Now, once you hold it close to your eye, you can see that it's actually a very beautiful watch and different as well, where there is a very nice subtle nuance to the dial, where the indices are elevated with loom filled inside. This is different than the Tudor Black Bay Pro, where they took the loom and slapped it directly on the dial. Um, personally, not my favorite because I feel like it looks a bit incomplete, um, but I know that watch is very popular, so probably just me. Now on the camera, it looks like the dial is a lot bluer, but I can assure you it is more dark than it is blue. Um, 42 millimeters across, 22 millimeter lugs. Not too sure what the lug to lug is, but it is quite short as you can see here because um, it is a integrated case where, we're not integrated, I guess. What am I trying to say? There's no spring bars to it. So you can see on the back here. Um, so the distance from lug to lug is actually quite short. To me, I personally never wear watches bigger than 40 millimeters, but because this watch feels more like a 41, to be quite honest, um, and uh, it's also built out of titanium. It is a lot lighter and a lot easier wearing. Let me put this on quickly. And here it is. The Tudor FXD on the factory fabric Velcro strap. I think they call it the self-fastening, but to be honest, it's just Velcro. I think they um, did that to avoid trademark issues. Now you got the very slim profile, as you can see here. My wrist is 6.75 inches, and it doesn't wear too big at all. Um, you can see how sleek the side case profile is. Comes with a crown guard as well. So I don't know if you can slip this under a dress cuff, but you can definitely uh, wear it with a jacket and have it slip underneath pretty easily. Um, I would recommend this watch for people up to, I guess, a or down to a 6.5 inch wrist just because of how sleek it wears. Um, however, if your wrist is under that size, you are probably better off with a watch less than 40 millimeters. Now, just to show you, um, oh, yeah, it comes with a Tudor stand clasp, and there's also a secondary strap they give you as well. I'll show that in a bit here. With the case back, so here you can see. Marine National 2022, this is the 2022 edition. The 2021 is allegedly to be a lot rarer just because they introduced it in, I believe, October or November of 2021. So there was only 150 of them made, allegedly. Nobody really knows the exact number. Now, just to show all the bells and whistles of what you get. So you get the Tudor warranty card with your name, your serial number and the date on it. You get your user manual, and you get the guarantee booklet. 
I also got this Tudor pouch with my purchase, which apparently they don't give out anymore because you only really get this if you uh, take a watch into service. But it comes with this uh, nice mat inside it. Works very well for a watch with a strap, uh, just because if you have a watch on a bracelet, unless your wrist is exactly the size that they give you all the links for, if that makes sense, um, your watch is not going to be able to wrap around this. So um, watch on a strap works perfectly, but not for watches on bracelet. Yeah, very nice material. And then also, aside from this very nice fabric Velcro strap, you do get a rubberized strap as well. And this one I quite like just because it is a very comfortable rubber material, very soft, very supple. Um, there are bumps on the strap itself to help grip. Now, the one complaint I have with this strap to upset how reliable it is, is that the side of the strap are quite sharp. So if you're wearing your watch and you're not doing anything outdoorsy, if you're just sitting in the office all day, which is what I wear this watch for, um, it will start to dig into your wrist. Um, so I would recommend, honestly, if you aren't the type of person who's gonna be wearing this watch to go swimming, running, hopefully nothing else that's too intense, you can then wear it on this fabric strap. But however, there is also another caveat with this fabric strap is that I have read online where people wear this strap on a daily for about four to six months and the Velcro actually stops gripping and they will have to take it in. It is about 200 bucks to replace for a new strap. So my recommendation is to get yourself a nice supple seatbelt gray NATO strap. Of course, it doesn't have to be gray, but this strap, I wear it on every single watch. It's not a plug, by the way. I don't have a shop. I don't sell these, but um, there are a few places. I'll leave links in the description where you can get this exact type of strap. It will cost you about 30 Canadian dollars or I guess 20 Euro or 20 USD. Um, and it is very, very soft, not thin either. Well, you're not going to really feel it on your wrist, but it is very durable and reliable. So you don't have to worry about your watch falling off. And yeah, I got myself a 22 millimeter seatbelt grenado strap for this watch just because I want to preserve this OEM uh, fabric strap and I also don't want to wear it on this one just because once you start you're going to start seeing some uh, gunk on it and uh, yeah, let's, let's not do that let's just wear it on the cheaper strap which is also very reliable and comfortable. One thing I really like about this watch is its bezel action. You will notice this watch is a bi-directional bezel just because it's not a diver bezel so you're not really going to use it to time anything now there's a special way that this bezel is supposed to be used as requested by the memory nationale however it feels very impractical so i don't really use it for anything i guess if you if i really wanted the time stake can i do it mm, not really usually to be quite honest, I just wear my Black Bay 58 if I want to time anything, which is quite rare on its own. Here's the watch on the wrist on my 6.75 inch wrist. Very comfortable on the fabric Velcro strap. You can see it under direct sunlight here. When you have it in the reflection, it doesn't catch the eye that much. But once you look at it like this, you can see the different levels to the dial indices and the dark color of the dial. And that's it for my review on the Tudor Pelagos FXD 2022 edition. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.